Welcome to Tales from Two. Hey, Tubi friends! Welcome to a brand new episode of Tales from Tubi. If you're new here and don't know what Tales from Tubi is, this is a series I do over here on Old Man Brad, where I take my love of Tubi and my love of horror movies and I mash them together in this nice little package. All these movies are streaming on Tubi at time of recording, so if you're coming to this episode later, hopefully they will still be streaming. So this week I am talking the new film Everwinter Night, directed by Adam Newman, and I also have an interview with Adam, and he has this great behind-the-scenes story of the making of Everwinter Night and kind of pivots they had to do and this not a common shoot for sure. It was great to hear this, this story. I can't wait to share it with you. Before we jump into all that, though, if you're in the Cincinnati area, come out to Frightful Fridays at the Esquire Theater. On the third Friday of the month, I host a screening. And for April, we're going to be watching a brain scan from 1994 starring Edward Furlong. This is a movie that failed at the box office when it originally released. In the years since, it has kind of had a following. And I am so excited to host a screening of this at the Esquire. Come out April 19th, 10 p.m. Let's watch a movie together. All right, let's move into Everwinter Night. Welcome to the Hall of You. Can we talk about the weekend for a second? <laughs> oh, oh, we have news. We are going to be pampered by We are going to get pampered slash comp slash what? Y'all made it. Yeah. Come on in, put your bags down. Just put your pretty selves up in here and get a drink. So we're just going to do this. Uh, yeah. yeah. The irony of this masquerade is that in actuality, this is a time of truth. Mm. You know what? All the guys in here are seriously awful. Do, do we know you? No, but can you just like sympathize with my shit? Nice talking to you. Oh my god. That was not nice talking to them. You need to be cut off. Though we gather in anonymity, we all share the need for connection. <sighs> it's really beautiful here. Yes, it truly is. It's like you were trying to get me alone. You brought out this creative genius that keeps describing me. I haven't written this hey. much poetry since when I was born. That's me. You know, I think the odds is so fucking important. So is this an annual thing? Well, they've been doing that longer than I've been here. So to old friends, bonds reborn. She's here. The time has come. Lifelong best friends Maddie and V set out for a relaxing vacation. When their old college clique hijacks their plans, V finds herself at a remote ski lodge where a group of mysterious, wealthy men throw a celebration centuries in the making. Like I said, this movie is directed by Adam Newman. It is co-written by Adam and Chris Goodwin, and it stars Victoria Mirror as V and McKenna Parsons as Maddie and many, many others. So this is a movie that I heard about online. One of my Twitter friends, Jeff Whitmere, And he posted about kind of how crazy this is, you know, Kevin Smith dialogue and it gets wild. So I was like, I got to see this movie. I wasn't disappointed. Like this movie, I'm not going to give, I'm going to give zero spoilers to this film because I want you to go on to Tubi and watch this movie, support this movie. Supporting indie horror films is one of my favorites. And this movie, like I said, it starts off, it is a slow burn. It starts off, it's very dialogue driven. And you get these friends that have known each other for years, a lot of quippy dialogue. You're getting to know them. You're getting to know their quips. You're getting to know their conflicts and everything else. It kind of builds up throughout this film. It's a very well-written dialogue film, and it really hooked me in, and I was engaged this whole time. And then it takes this crazy turn to a very wild and crazy ending that not all of it I was expecting. Some of it I kind of saw coming, but not all of it. And by the end, I found myself, I mean, overall, I I really enjoyed this film. You know, whether you go rent it on VOD or you go watch it on Tubi, 
you need to check out Everwinter Night because it is it is definitely worth your watch. But those are just my quick thoughts. I had a chance to sit down with Adam Newman and we chatted about the film, which was an unorthodox way to make a movie the way that they did it. So we're going to roll into that interview with him and I'll talk to you on the other side. Hey, everybody. I am excited. I am here with Adam Newman, the writer, director of Everwinter Night, which you can stream on VOD or watch it on Tubi right now. How are you doing today, Adam? I am doing great. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Now, I've heard there is quite the story of getting this movie made, and it's it's quite the movie. Let me tell you that. it's It leads up to quite a wild ending. I wasn't expecting it to go where it went. Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, we certainly weren't expecting the shoot to go the way that it went. <laughs> um, we had another movie that we had planned on shooting. And to be honest, it was not a horror movie. We were going to be doing a very quiet family drama that happened to have the same name, Everwinter Night. Well, that's quite the turn then. <laughs> yeah, we, we weren't expecting it, but we had this uh, we had this movie made. And it was a sequel to one of the one of our movies that we have distribution for called Ice Patrol. OK, and we were really excited about it. And we had a lot of SAG actors mixed with non SAG actors. And uh, this was right at the end of COVID. And we were not able to meet the SAG guidelines for COVID. We kept trying. They we kept they kept coming back to us and saying, Sorry, uh, this isn't going to cut it. We try again. And eventually it became pretty clear that we're going to have to spend another ten or twenty thousand dollars in order to meet their guidelines. And so, oh, wow. Yeah. When our movie in total at that time was at forty thousand dollar budget, um, we knew that that wasn't going to happen. And so the night before we were having everybody fly or drive in, we had to make a decision, which was, do we make a completely new movie because we just lost half of our actors? Yeah. Or do we, you know, do we move on and, and, you know, take the loss? And we said, you know what, it's, it's going to be one of the most creative <laughs> uh, journeys we could ever take. Let's try it. And so uh, myself and Chris Goodwin, who also is in the movie, uh, we wrote the movie in a weekend. We boarded the whole thing up on one day. And the next day we started writing. He wrote forwards and I wrote backwards. And, and in the middle. <laughs> yeah, we tried to. Uh, we got about probably about 40 or 50 pages done that weekend. And then. After we were done shooting on the 12 hour days, we would go back to bed and start typing more so that we could get the scenes out. So, yeah, no, it was it's not how you should make a movie. I, uh, <laughs> no, it's it... sure. Um, <laughs> but it was a cool it was a cool creative exercise and and seeing what we could do. And all, obviously we we took a, a bit of a turn genre wise. And it was just an idea that I've been playing with for a couple of years and had some notes on and. We kind of took that and ran with it. And after that 10 days of shooting, we did have to come back for reshoots for about four days. And then we did one day of pickups after that, just so that the uh, the movie makes sense. And the fact that if it's coherent and anybody can enjoy it, it's it's kind of a miracle. <laughs> because it was, you know, a chaotic experience. Are there any basically a spirit, I guess I could say, from that original script in there at all? Did you take little pieces like, you know, I kind of like this part of that original script. Well, let's kind of work it into this. Do, do you mean the original idea? Or yeah, you yeah, the about... original idea that you were going to shoot, but you had to, had to start. Oh, over. Uh, no, not at all. It's, okay. it's about as far. I mean, the only thing was that we had the actors that we had for that that were non-union. Yeah. And so we started writing to their abilities. Luckily, we have this great group of, of actors that we've worked with for six or seven years and mm -hmm. so we know them and they know us uh we brought in some new people too which was very exciting and we got to know their personality and went all right let's try to write something to that no uh it's it is as different as can be if you go watch ice patrol on tubi which is the movie the prequel that we were <laughs> to the movie we were going to make okay uh, it's very very low budget but it's something that we were really passionate about um but it is a I mean, everybody says every winter is a slow burn, but if you're if you want a real slow burn, you go watch <laughs> Ice Patrol because it's very, really really quiet. It's really inspired by Coen Brothers stuff and okay. you know, shotgun right. stories. If you've seen the the Jeff Nichols movie, uh, stuff like that. So no, it's about as different as <laughs> as it can be. And also because Chris was writing with me, and um, you know, I like I like the horror stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, but Chris is really, he's, he loves banter and he's really, really good at writing, writing fun banter. So we kind of combined the two, you know, 
what we kind of both like in order to make the movie. So, and, and how did the actors, I mean, this was kind of a quick turnaround and then some days I'm sure it was like, well, here's your pages for today. This is what yeah. your scene's going to be. How did, how did they take this kind of quick twist? I guess. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, they probably all hate me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, they, they were troopers and I, I can't believe that they were able to, to do what they did, especially because we basically just had to say, can you trust us? Mm -hmm. We're going to, we know where we're going and we think we're writing to where your strengths are. And so we hope that we're going to find the place uh, if, but we're going to completely trust you to find the characters. Yeah. Too. So now I, I should say a lot of these actors were working. We're in pre-production right now. We're about 16 days away from shooting and a lot of these actors are coming back. So I guess they don't hate us that much, <laughs> uh, which is great. That's good. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then there was, you know, it was the most stressful set I've ever been on for sure because of the circumstances. But the reason I was able to get through it as I'm tearing my hair out, trying to write and we're getting two hours of sleep, you keep hearing the actors say, I think we're part of something special. Yeah. And they're talking about how, I, I don't know. I think this is going to be a really great movie. And I'm like, thank God you're sure. Cause I'm not, <laughs> but yeah, it was, they were obviously incredible. And for them to be game, not knowing it, it speaks to them and their character, you know, as you were, were writing it or not even writing it, just even making it and they're learning their characters as they're going day to day. Was there any improv or any time you're like cut Let's try this. Let's rewrite it on the spot and try this instead. It never got to that level okay. for sure. What was kind of cool, though, is when we did have those first two days where a lot of these actors were coming in and you start to pick up their personalities immediately. You've probably been around actors. They're a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And They're some passionate, of them just are. Like, I mean, indie, yeah, indie no, filmmakers certainly. in general are just passionate. Oh, definitely. And uh, if anything, filmmakers are tougher to deal with because they won't talk to you until you start speaking <laughs> their language, which is movies. But but actors will come in and they'll tell you exactly who they are. And I kind of like that about them. And, you know, like uh, Alana, who plays Becca in the movie, does the gun spinning at one point. That's just because mm -hmm. she was showing us that she could do some gun spinning. So we're like, well, that goes in the movie. All right. And so there was a lot of that. But in terms of uh, on the day of improv type stuff, we didn't have time, you know, because we're so we're trying to hit so fast and luckily we are, we're stuck in one location and we're sleeping in that location as well. So we're getting to know it very intimately. Mm -hmm. Everything in filmmaking is just so we barely have time to get two takes, let alone really start to improv and go off in a different direction. How many days uh, of shooting did you have on this? So it was 10 to start. Uh, then we did it four days when we came back and then Chris who edited the movie as well, he convinced, he convinced us all to do one day of pickups just to, just to clean some things up. So there's probably about a year and a half in between mm -hmm. the original shoot and the last four days. Um, so total was 15 days. And I mean, you talked about the, you know, the dialogue and, and writing that dialogue. I mean, big part of the movie. I mean, it is, it's the characters and they're playing off each other. Very, I know people have said like Kevin Smith type, like, like yeah. it's like some friends just hanging out, just having a good time. And then, we get to this twist. Now, mm -hmm. was it when you were writing, you said you started from the back, he started from the front, where you're like, okay, I'll I'll do this crazy stuff at the end. You do the the fun people, you know, the the characters talking to each other. It was sort of like that. Uh, Chris is Chris is really, really good at at banter. He's he writes he writes really good. Uh, he's got a couple uh, very chatty uh, movies out there called On the Seventh Date and Truth Cocktail, both of which are very, very good. And he's really good at that. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I, I I basically say if you laughed, it was probably Chris who wrote it. And <laughs> if, it was, if it was the babble of, of a cult, it was probably me. It, what's interesting is we actually kind of started focusing on character relationships, mm -hmm. too. So uh, because the core of this movie came from the relationship between Maddie and V is actually kind of based off of the relationship that me and my sister have. Okay. She's my best friend. And so and I was going through these things of thinking about, well, what would happen if I started to lose that connection because she's got a child and she's got a husband and we're moving further away from each other. And so the Maddie and V stuff I took a lot of and then I took a lot of the uh, V and Jack conversations. And then Chris uh, wrote uh, he plays Eric. So he wrote a lot of the Eric and Maddie stuff. And uh, he was a lot of the side characters. So it kind of shaped itself out to be like that. Again, I have no idea how the movie ends up working working out, but it is cool to watch <laughs> it through with you know a group of people and be like, my scene, 
Chris's scene, my scene. You know? <laughs> now I, I know this is, you made a movie that was completely unorthodox and not how you should probably make one, yeah. but along the way, were there a lot of lessons that you learned, not only in filmmaking, but just in the process of, of doing it that you've kind of like, I can bring this to future projects. Oh, certainly. Um, Filmmaking is creative problem solving. Mm -hmm. And I think this was the most extreme version of that. Uh, there's a sequence towards the end of the film, and I don't necessarily want to spoil it, yeah. but there's kind of a sort of a fight sequence of sorts real right at the end. And that was originally going to, you know, it was this big planned thing. And, and that became a, hey, this would take us three days to shoot. We have four hours. So <laughs> you start to, <laughs> all right. you start to, yeah. And so you start figuring out, all right, what what is the, the least amount of shots we can do, but this can also still be effective for an audience mm -hmm. and get the point across that we're looking for. So you do, we learned a lot about that. And I, I'm a big person that thinks a lot about how many shots we can hit an hour. And so when I do my shot list, I start going, okay, well, if we're hitting two and a half shots an hour, we should be able to hit this schedule. This shoot was the one that started really getting me into that headspace going based off of who we have for crew and who we have for cast. We can typically average about that. And the good news is the director of photography who worked on that is going to be working with us again on this next project. So we certainly learned how to creatively problem solve in a much more stressful and fast paced environment. Mm -hmm. And we're now starting to learn, you know, what our pace is when it comes to to telling a story. And are you are you a fan of horror? You you know, your original concept was com something completely different and you switched over to the horror side. Are you yeah. a fan and influenced, I guess, what influenced you in that way? The funny thing, I'm going to say, I, I came into horror later in life, and okay. I'm sure people that are watching that are listening to this are going, yeah, no, we can tell with Everwinter. Um, <laughs> I hope that's not the case. I was terrified of everything as a child. So I remember my dad was watching Creep Show, and I saw, I can't remember the name of the short, but there's one where bugs burst out of this man. Yes. And and I went, never again. I'm never watching another <laughs> horror anything. I'm done. Uh, so I came in into uh, probably about five years ago. So in my early 30s, I started watching a whole lot more. I, I, I watched the movie It Follows in the theater. And I was like, oh, I actually like horror movies. I should go back and okay. start watching as many as I can. And then I started playing catch up. And yeah, no, I like them. I like them a lot. And I like all the different varieties. I like slow burn stuff. Mm -hmm. I like what Tubi has to offer. You know, I, I love, I love some campy stuff and yeah, no, I'm a big fan. And the next movie that we're doing uh, is, is even more of a horror, I would say than, than ever winter. So now in the next, you said a lot of, you know, some cast and crew and stuff like that are coming back mm. with you for your next film. Mm -hmm. and when you uh, contact them, was it like, don't worry guys, we got a little bit more time. <laughs> we have, we have all this. And they're like, okay, okay. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially with our DP. That was a big one. When I when I finally said, hey, we're going to have uh, prep. He was very, very excited <laughs> about that because we're, you know, we're now in the in the dregs of, of you know, pre-production. And so much of what mm -hmm. we want to talk about is what's this movie going to look like? What's it going to feel like? What are outdoor scenes going to feel like? Uh, and, you know, I get to send over a, a lookbook to uh, th to him and I get to send actors movies that inspired the characters, which is such a cool feeling. So once I said, hey, we're going to make another movie and it's not going to be until April. You know, I said this eight months ago or something like that. Everybody gets a little bit more excited. <laughs> but they'll have a little bit more time to to run with the characters in the production. The process of, of creating this movie was I mean, there's quite the story behind it. Now, after you yeah. got it finished, everything, mm -hmm. you know, it's in the can. How was it getting, trying to get it out there, basically? Um, well, uh, the did you do is, festival so we, runs with it or did you do anything like that? We went to one festival. We basically only submitted to one. I think we've submitted to a few others that do allow a film in if it has distribution. Because okay. we did, we wanted to quickly get it distributed. So we went the self-distribution route. Okay. So we, uh, we premiered back in October uh, so we had a two, we did two showings. We did one in New Hampshire where we shot the movie and then we did one in Massachusetts down closer to Boston. Uh, we both had great turnouts. And then from there, you know, we talked really quickly to a sales agent and then we talked to a distributor who would not, who wouldn't, wouldn't distribute the movie just because of the poster. And, um, really? wow. Okay. I know. Yeah. And so we went, you know what, let's, let's try it ourselves this time and let's see what it's going to take to market it ourselves and see how we can do to push that out there. And so we're getting our feet wet you know, for the first time and, and we're using film hub and 
it's it's been a great service because you know it gives the opportunity for independent filmmakers you know our movie ended up costing us sixty thousand dollars and so we're really small potatoes in terms of things and mm -hmm. it's great that we're able to get this project out there it does suck that you can't you don't know when it's going to pop you know we're lucky enough that it got onto Tubi 22 days after we we posted. Some people have been waiting seven months, and so I, I it is a tough one to to deal with that way. But what's great is it's now on a bunch of streaming platforms. It's mm -hmm. you know it's on Amazon, it's on Tubi, and now we're starting to see people watching it that we don't know, which is <laughs> which is the coolest part. You get to talk to people about your you know experience with it and everything else. Yeah, no, it's it's been great, and a lot of it is because of the this gentleman that has, I believe he reached out to you, which was Alex and mm -hmm. he's, he's gotten us in touch with so many people and it's, it's cool because it's the first time when lots of people are watching our movies and which is just, it's been 15 years of, of fighting this uphill battle to get anything seen. And yeah. now people are starting to see it and, and you know, the, the bad reviews, they hurt a little, they do, of course they I mean, stink. It's but your, it's your review, personal. Yeah. It's your, it's your, yeah, your course. project. So, but it's amazing what the, whenever you get a good review it oh my god it's it's it gets me emotional you know and I, i'm not a crier and uh <laughs> but you still you go wow someone's talking about my movie like i talk about movies for the first time so it's been a cool little journey so far and it's amazing how much quicker you can do things now you know so our next project we're shooting in like i said 16 days and i mean we have a premiere time and then we're gonna expecting to get basically be on streamers again in early 2025 i guess it would be so okay. yeah yeah it's pretty cool now you said one they didn't want it because of the poster who who created your poster artwork uh so it's called sadist art oh yeah uh, i know who that is yeah he's the, the posters i'm sorry the poster is incredible it really is it's great and mark uh it's going back i don't i think that's his last name i don't know how exactly to pronounce it but he makes incredible artwork and we, does. what so, yeah and what's so great about him is we sent him the movie and and he created the artwork based off of that he went this is kind of what i'm thinking I was like, dude, this is so much better than I would have ever imagined. <laughs> and, and so the sales rep did say, oh, it's not intense enough. You know, he said, there's not enough, there's not enough gore on the cover. And we went, I know, but like, we like it. It feels a little bit old school and throwback mm -hmm. and classy. And it kind of, it feels a little bit like the lodge that the, the story takes place in. So I love the poster and very happy with what, what people have been saying about it. That, so I think we're we're in the right, at least on that one. What do you have next? What's getting ready to start up for you that I, that you can talk about, I guess? Oh, yeah. No, certainly can talk about it. So we have a movie uh, that's coming up. It's called Round the Decay. And we are shooting it in uh, partially in Waterville Valley, New Hampshire, which we own a lot of locations up there, our production company. And then we are shooting the rest of it at uh, Ruggles Mine, which is a really cool location that was just recently purchased. And it's a it's a full formerly functioning mind so we have a cool monster movie that we're going to be doing okay. um it's yeah it's a lot more horror than than ever winter is it's still a slow burn so people be prepared for that that's for sure but no we're really really excited for it we have some cool people coming on board obviously some of the actors that we worked with in the last movie which is great you know our our uh, our v from from ever winter is our lead in this movie victoria mirror she's incredible i'll work with her for the rest of my life and and then we also brought in some cool other act. You know, we have Roger Clark from Red Dead Redemption, which is, you know, that, which is great. He's going to be a part of the movie. And then our special effects makeup guy is is like a legend. He did um, he was working. He worked on World of the Worlds and he did Stranger Things. And what was so cool is the other day he sent me some pictures of being on set for Dr. Sleep. Um, so, yeah, he did a lot of a lot of really cool practical effects and and he's got us a good monster suit which we're very very excited about so and this movie's you know three times three and a half times the budget of anything else we've ever done and it's because of the success that we had with everwinter and so yeah we're, we're we think we're building something here and and hopefully in you know less than a year i'll be talking to you again about the next one <laughs> so where where can people follow along to watch you know for the next one coming out, the monster. I'm excited. Really? I love monster movies. So, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, so we've got Dreamscape Productions LLC on Instagram. Uh, I'm director Adam Newman on Instagram. 
Um, we also have round underscore the underscore decay uh, on Instagram. All of these same things we have on Facebook as well. Okay. Uh, Dreamscapeproductions.com is our website. It is very, very under construction, uh, mainly because we've been in post-production and pre-production. And there's three of us right now working on working on it. So it's a, it's it's still up and coming, uh, but our merchandise will start being up there. You know, we've got the hats and things like that. So we're hoping, you know, we, we built this... This this uh, production company finally existed. Uh, November is when we officially made it official, and we're hoping to start making you know two to three movies a year, and uh, you know which is it's bold. And we want to jump around genre to genre, you know. So I I love horror movies, I do, but I also want to make drama movies, and I want to make sci fi movies, and I want to make action movies, and you know we've jumped all over. My last short film was was an action like a sci-fi action romance and you know okay. before that we did a quiet family drama and you know before that we did a trauma movie of richard linklater if trauma made a richard linklater movie that's how i wanted it to be okay. so yeah we've we've been jumping all over the place and um it would be great if people continue to follow our journey especially if they like if they like everwinter i know this is always a, a, a debate out there will there be a physical release for everwinter is it that's in, cool. in the cards? So we do okay. have, I mean, we've been selling DVDs whenever we've gone to cons and things like that, Okay, which is cool. Uh, we're really hoping to get a Blu-ray made, though, relatively soon. So, yeah, physical media and literally right before I spoke to you talking about getting it made into VHS. So uh, yeah, that's because we, know, we have some VHS heads. Yeah. So uh, physical. Yes. Especially what I've learned in this process when it comes to the horror community now being kind of in it for the last five years is just how passionate they are and especially about physical physical media and merchandise that's attached to the things that they love mm -hmm. and just being at these cons and seeing how how passionate they are that's that's why it's so great even when you get a bad review from them because it's go wow they're very passionate about how much they hated it and that's that's a good feeling even even if it's <laughs> hatred so no it's been really cool and we're hoping um that we can get those physical those physical okay. viable versions out relatively soon well, Adam, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to chat with me and best of luck with this one and Round Decay that's coming soon. I'm going to be watching for that one. All right. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank Adam for chatting with me. It was a great discussion. I loved hearing this story of this film, how they got it made, how it went from something completely different to what they had. And I'm super excited to see their monster movie that they're getting ready to start work on. I think that one's going to be fun. I can't wait to to see. I can't wait to see that when it comes out. All right, before I move out, there is a couple films that I want to say besides Everwinter Night. There's another film on Tubi that you need to go check out that I recently just watched. Actually, two on Tubi. One is called A Hundred Bloody Acres. And this is directed by the Carnes Brothers, who directed recently Late Night with the Devil that is in theaters. I did an episode for it previously, which you should go listen to. Self-promotion plug right there. Go listen to my Late Night with the Devil. It's one of my favorite horror movies of this year so far. And after seeing that, I was like, I need to see what else these guys have made because I need to go watch them. 100 Bloody Acres is one of them, and it's very quirky, kind of like Tucker and Dale versus Evil with a twist to it. So... Highly recommend checking out 100 Bloody Acres. And the other one that is a Tubi original is called Slay. And it is, I mean, it's basically drag queen from dusk till dawn. It, it's these drag queens go to this bar out in the middle of nowhere where they set up the show. It was the wrong bar, but they go through with it. And then vampires show up and shit gets real. It is so much fun. I absolutely had a blast with this movie and highly recommend checking out Slay. Both of those are on Tubi along with Everwinter Night. So there you go. You can set up a whole Tubi night with all of these films. Thanks so much for listening to this Tales from Tubi. Just make sure you subscribe to Old Man Brad and you'll never miss any episodes, whether it's Tales from Tubi or any of my regular reviews and interviews. And if you love the show, go drop me a review over on your favorite podcatcher, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Good Pods, wherever it may be. I'd love to hear what you think of the show. And if you really, really love the show, patreon.com slash oldmanbrad. But I'll be back soon with a new episode. I recently just went to Horror Hound, so I will have a recap 
of my time at Horror Hound Weekend, as well as a few of the short films and feature films that I watched through the weekend, and some interviews with a few of the filmmakers. Watch for that coming soon. Just remember, Tuesdays aren't just for tacos. We'll talk to you later, everybody. <laughs>